Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to create this particular customized performance dashboard. So we have two different colors. You can actually use this bright color or the dark color team, anyone you like. But before we come back here and look at what is going on on this dashboard, let us look at what the task would look like. All right, now that you have seen this, let us look at the background we are going to use. Now for our light color team, we're going to use this particular color to actually have it done. And for the dark color team, this is the color we're going to use. Now let us look at how we are going to actually create our light version color dashboard. So here in PowerPoint, we have actually created this particular uh, background for it. And for the dark team, we're going to be using something very dark that would look just like this and i'm gonna show you how to create all of these in no time so let's just look at the dashboard in detail the objective of this dashboard is to segment our customers to know which particular product to push to some customers based on customer with children and customer without children and over here you can see customer profiling all of this will definitely help us to understand our customer so well so if you love this let's go to the next one and start creating All right, everyone, welcome back. In this first and second video, we have actually, you know, gotten this particular part created specifically in the transformation part is where you need to actually watch the first part. And to actually create this visual as you see right here, you watch the second video to do that, to make a completion of it. Okay, today, what we're about to get into is what you have on your screen. So take a look at that and see how we can do it. So first of all, we need to understand what particular tables we are going to use for this. The first table is actually our customer table. This is the table where we need to create a calculated column into. Then the second column is our fact table here, which is where we have our transactional history right in. So in this column, we have the order quantity here. And in this column, in this particular same table is where we're going to create our total transaction. Okay, so let's go over to our customer table. Inside the customer table, we're going to actually insert a new uh, column. In this new column, we can name it anything we like. So I'm going to name my new column, you know, uh, let me just collapse this. So I'm going to name my new column customer type. Okay, for my customer type, I want to store the total orders of my customer in a variable. So quickly, I go for a variable. And you know, I'm a fan of an underscore. So using an underscore, I'm going to say total orders. So for my total orders, I need to actually go ahead and count rows of my order table. So this is not an ideal. I'm going to show you because we might have an error doing this, but I'll show you why we are having it. And what I'm going to do now is to actually see if for me to get my total orders, I have to use the controls to actually get this done. So using the controls, we count the orders from our fact table. Then from there, we create a new variable. And this variable is going to actually calculate for us the total purchases. So purchases. So to do that now, what we need to do is to use the sum function over here. And inside the sum function, we're going to actually, you know, sum the order column that I've shown you in the fact table, which is this particular one. This is the order quantity column. So now we are done with all the variables we need to create to have our customer type segmented. So over here, I'm going to just return what we want. So you can use either the nested if, or you can use the switch true function to actually have this done. So let us try the nested if. So my first if is going to actually take a logical test that looks like this. So I want to actually look at my total orders and check if any customer has any order greater than or equal to two. And if that same customer actually has 
purchases that is greater than or equal to a hundred. Then if we have any customer within this range, we want to categorize those customers into VIP or customers. VIP customers. Then when the result is false, we want to nest in that if to give it in that condition. So we want to say where the total orders is greater than or equal to two. Now, we are not going to actually check if the total purchase is greater than or less than anything. So over here, what we're going to do straight up is to actually say if the result is true, then we want to categorize those customers into loyal customers. Otherwise, we want to categorize the rest of the customers into periodic buyers. You get it? Then once you're done with this, you can go ahead and close your last if and the first if should be closed. So we are done with all we want to add. So I can go ahead and hit my enter. So to our surprise, there will be an error here because we're going to be having repetitive VIP customers without having the other ones. Then if I go over here, let me have this collapsed. I open it up. This is what we have. Can somebody think of why we have just VIP customers? That was because there was no cost, uh, context transition in this particular, you know, uh, variables we have here. So to have the correct one now, what you can do is either you are referencing an already existing, you know, measures, or you are using calculate function to convert the raw context into a filter context. So using the calculate function here now, and I'm going to use calculate function over here. So look at it. This time around, we should have the actual, you know, customer type we're looking for. If I open it up right now, you can see we have loyal customers and periodic buyers, the VIP customers. So how does the system do this? So let's go over here to our customer measures. Inside the customer measures, we want to actually create, you know, total orders as a measure. So I'm going to create a new measure here. This time around, you're not trying to create a new calculated column. Instead, we're going to create a measure. So creating a measure right now, I'm going to name it um, numbers of transaction here. So for numbers of transaction, we are looking at counting the rows of our fact table to know how many rows that fact table contained. So here we go using the count rows. So we reference the table, we close and we hit the enter key. This calculates the total transactions for us. Other than this, we need to know how many quantity we have sold over time. Then that should actually come here. So total revenue. I'm going to put my total quantity in this particular all measures because it has nothing to do with my customers. So I wouldn't put it there. So QT, Y for quantity, ordered. So for quantity ordered. So it's going to be equals. So I'm going to use my sum function over here. So I'm going to sum the ordered quantity which is this very one. And I go ahead and close and hit my enter key. Let's get back to our measure. Sorry, our calculated column we have created in the customer table. So I'm going to come over here to this particular customer table. So we need to look at that. So here we have it. So now for context transition to happen, you don't necessarily need to use the calculate function, the count rows, and actually use the fact table to count how many we have. So we can directly reference the measure we have. And what measure is that? We're going to use the numbers of transaction here. Then for we to have in that context transition here again, we can reference the last measure we created, which is going to be our quantity ordered here. So if I hit my enter key, we're still going to maintain the same thing we had before. So I think we have an inbuilt context transition in merger when we bring it over to our 
calculated column. So let's check it out. Over here now, I'm going to actually add two new columns to test what we have done to see if there is any truth in what it is that we've done. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to just call this one transaction. So for my transaction, I reference this particular transaction. Here, I hit my enter. Then I want to add a new column again. This new column is going to start in the quantity we have sold. So for the quantity we have sold, I'm going to just type in QTY for quantity. So over here, we bring in the quantity ordered. And let's go ahead and hit our enter key. Now we have to verify if our condition that we've used in our customer type is true. So what I'm going to do right now is to actually filter only the loyal customers and see what we have on the loyal customers. So let's just minimize this a bit. So we're going to filter the loyal customers. Then we'll click on OK. So for the loyal customers, let us look at it. We said where the total order is actually greater than or equal to two. So we did not put in consideration the quantity. We are talking about the orders. So what is our orders here? So our total orders is the transaction here, the numbers of transaction. And um, if you look at it over here now, is actually greater than two. We can find one here. So let us now verify the VIP, you know, customers and look at what we have over there. So for the VIP customers, what we're going to see here now is that the customer on that VIP will be greater than what? Will be greater than two. And this is what we have. So can you see? Not just that, the, um, the quantity would actually be greater than a hundred or equal to a hundred. So you can see the minimum is hundred and uh, we have the maximum to be anything like this is seven, nine, six. So we can have thousands of it. You understand? That is what we have done. So you can manually just try to check exactly what these conditions you have actually supplied to this is. So if we go to the last one, which is the periodic bias now, you can see we have just one ordered or one transaction, whatever you want to call it. And this is what it is. So we have just gotten this captured. It is time for it to actually have it visualized. So in fact, those two columns we have here is just to checkmate. We don't really actually need them. So we can go over here right now. And now we are set for visualization. So let us get in this particular chart we have here. So I'm going to move it from that particular area to this area here. So let's zoom closely to see what we're doing. Then we can increase this, bring it down here. So go back to this particular data view where you can see all your data right in. And what we're going to do right now is to make sure we look for that particular customer type we have added, which is this particular one. So we have it. That goes for the y-axis. So for the x-axis here, what we want to put right here is to see the total revenue. So we want to break it down by the total revenue. So going over to all measures. So we have our total revenue right here. And uh, here we go. We have it. So if you look at it, it doesn't look very beautiful. What we can do now is to actually do the formatting. So watch me and see how I did it. The very first thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to my X axis here and uh, turn off the title. So I'm going to turn off the X axis right now, totally. Then if I go to the Y axis here, the very first thing is to turn off the title. And if you still look at it, this is not showing well. And before it can actually show or display my our uh, y-axis, I have to stretch it. Can you see? So it would have to contain all of this particular part. And I don't want to do that. So what I can do is to keep it as small as I want, just like this. Then what I'm going to do right now is to actually look at this particular part here. Can you see it now? So put it at 50%. That would definitely do this for you. So no matter how you make it small, 
it will still make it visible for you. So something like this is okay. You can decide to stretch it a little bit. For the title, we don't need it. We are going to create our own title ourselves. So let's go over and uh, take off the title. So just scroll up and take off the title. So we have something like this. Before we come back for the formatting, what we're going to do right now is to create some Dutch hat that is some kind of dynamic, you know, um, top customers. Let us take a look at it first before we come back here. This is how our dynamic customers look like. We can decide to select like the top two customers and what we're going to be seeing is just the view of the top two customers right on this table. So if I decide to show the top four customers, it's going to show me the top four customers. It's based on ranking. So in case you've not done this, I've done this in my previous videos. So if you've not seen me you know, get this done before, let's go ahead and see how we can actually create this from the scratch. So let us go to the customer measure. So it's going to be a very simple measure indeed. So the very first thing I'm going to do right now is to some kind of create a table here to show the result first before we decide to turn into a chart. So I have a table here. I'm going to just make the table big. So in this table, I want to have my customers right in here. So I go to the customer table. I want to have the full name of my customers. Then I have the full name there. Then I want to bring, bring in the revenue we have generated from those customers. So this is the revenue from those customers. Okay, now it is time for we to create our merger inside the customer merger table. So now go ahead and create a new merger. So let us name this one dynamic. Customers. So in our dynamic customers, what we're going to do is to actually you know, store our ranking inside a measure and return and see what would be the behavior of our ranking first before we do any other thing. So I'm going to type in here a variable. I'm going to say underscore top customers. So for my top customers, what I'm going to do, I want to use the rank X to get it done. So if I type in here, rank x which is this one so what will the rank x be looking for the rank x is actually looking for a table and that will definitely be my customer table and i'm going to give it the column as well so i'll go for my customer table that will definitely be customer so dim customer here like the dimensional table for my customers so comma so for the expression, it's actually looking for the total revenue. So I'm going to give it the total revenue here. That is what it is that it's looking for. Now the next thing is for the value. For the value, if you don't want to give it to it, you can jump it, which is this particular one right here. That is our next one. So I can give a space. So I'll put on that comma again. It's not going to order it how we want to sort this. So I want to sort this in descending order. So we have given it sorted descending order. Go ahead and have this closed and hit the enter key. So let's see what this is going to give to us. Sorry, we have an error. That was why we should have used our return. Return first here. So we're going to return our underscore top customers and we hit our enter key. So we can push this into our table. So if we take a look at this now, what happens? I know this will definitely happen. I want to show you why this definitely happened. Can you see? We have one all true. There is no difference between the first person and the second person. Why is it happening? Even if I try to sort my customer, you know, revenue, like if I come over here now and I sort, you can see where we say sort. So we want to sort by revenue. So this is sort of said, uh, you know, descending from the highest value to the lowest value. And we are still having one all true. So let's just go back and visit our dynamic customers here and look at what happens. So I'm going to just make it a little. For now, watch out. So what happened is this. We did not provide it a function that can actually make it to have comparison between customer A to customer B and C. 
and that function is actually the all function so with the all function the all function is going to say okay can you compare this particular revenue of this customer to this customer to this customer so if revenue of this customer is higher than this one give me one if this one is higher than this one give me two otherwise that was this will be three did you get it right now so let us try that and see what that will do for us so over here now where i have um, my customer table intel so what i'm gonna do right now is to use the all function using the all function here the all function is either looking for a table or a column so this time around i want to give my all function a column and that column will be my customer full name so if i type in here customer so i'll go to where we have the customer full name right here and we can go ahead and have this closed then hit my enter key let's see what we are going to have having this so corrected right this is what this was what I was, what I was telling you let's go over here and uh, take a look at it in full so the system were able to some kind of find this particular customer here and say okay for this customer can you compare it to this particular customer using the all function the all function were able to help us to do that and it returned when the comparison was done it returned one and for this particular one it's returning two because it compares this one here to this particular one we have right here and automatically it returns two so when comparison is done between this particular one it's going to return three to this and this is how it is being done now that we have gotten our ranking what do we want do we want the ranking no we do not want to keep the ranking what we want to keep is the revenue of those people that ranked highest so going back to dynamic merge now we need to update it so under the return here instead of us returning this particular you know underscore top customers we're going to use the if function to determine what we return not the ranking but revenue so here i'm going to use my if so it's saying if underscore top customer is less than or equal to uh let's say five so i want you to return total revenue so you return what you return total revenue so that is the measure you want to return otherwise just return blank don't give it blank like in double quotation it's not going to be healthy it will still show the names of those customers that does not really meet the top five so let's go and commit this hitting the enter key and see what we have so it's going to reduce it to just the top five customers that we have right here we have it so what happens if i go ahead and remove my total revenue because we don't need it right now so i'm going to come over here and take off the total revenue as you can see we only have the top five customers that we are showing but what happens if we decide to say okay for the if we want to provide if the result is false and we just want to have it in blank so if i go ahead and hit my enter key right now it's going to return back to me the customers that does not meet the top five but give me blank can you see it now so we have those customers so to avoid all of this now what we can specifically do is to stop giving it this if the result is false and hit enter key there is going to just return for us what we need to see so it has narrowed it down this is beautiful so we want to make this dynamic because we don't want our boss to say okay what i want is not just the top five but the top three so can you put it for the top three so we have to come here and manually change this to three then hit our enter key so this is not in any way some kind of healthy what can we do to make it dynamic because next time he would like i think the board member would like to see the top 10 so we'll have to change it to top 10 again that is where this particular modeling here comes in so click on the modeling part right here so you're going to find where it says new parameters so using the new parameters we can create a dynamic you know selection for it so just click on the numeric range here 
So we have lots of customers. We want to give them the privilege to select more than five customers. So the first thing we're going to do, leave the parameter name the way it is if you don't want to change it. But if you want to change it, you can call this dynamic. Just name it dynamic. Dynamic customers. Okay. Then allow this to be on a whole number. Then over here, the minimum you want to see might be just, you know, uh, three. Or you can put a minimum to one, just one customer. Then the maximum they can actually select should be like the top 50 customers. Then the increment when you actually, maybe you're trying to use the slide, should be by one. Then what will be the default? The default can be zero. If there is nothing in selection, you want to see zero. Okay. So allow this particular ad slicer to be here. Then go ahead and click on create. So we have just created that particular parameter. What we can do right now, here we go, we have it, is to integrate this into our measure. So let us go ahead and take a look at where this is sitting and see what we have right in there. So right here we have this, and this is what we have. So we can decide to change from 50 to 40 and even below or above what we have here. So manually change this number. In case you want to learn what this particular generate series is all about, just come over here and remove this particular comma. So put the comma back, you now read through this. Generate series here, start value. The start value is one. The end value is actually, you know, 50. And the increment here is this particular one here, increased by one. So if you want to change the start value, the end value, and the increase, you can just manually change those numbers you have right here. So we have a measure created in here for us. So this is the measure we're going to use inside our own dynamic customers. So let us try it. So clicking on dynamic customers here. So over here where we have number, you can remove that number and I will just type in dynamic, you know, here we go. So it's now dynamic customer, dynamic customer value. The one that has value is what you're gonna use. In case you use a different name, make sure when trying to reference the measure over here, use the one that has value in it. So we have just done the good work. If I hit my enter key right now, we should be good to go. And this is all you need to do. So right now we have nothing displaying on our screen. So what could that be? Is that an error? I guess no. That was because we did not select anything. So let's just go ahead and select the top five here. And the top five would definitely show up right here. It does show. So we can decide to make it like top 11. So we're gonna have the top 11 here. So it's taking it back. Why are we having this automatically reset? Okay, I think it's not resetting again. So we can reduce it. So we've given it some kind of flexibility. So our manager will not call us back anytime soon again. So you can decide not to use this slide, just like what I've done in my own report. So what I'll do now is to go over here, then click on the settings, click over here, and you can click on drop down. So when you click on drop down, when you click on this, you can just, just select top three, and that shows up, top four, that shows up as well, and you have this. So if this is what you want, that is good. But if this not, it's your own choice. Over here, what I'm gonna do right now is to convert this into um, a proper chart. So let's see what chart we're gonna use for this. So let's go over here and select this particular chart. It's always good for this kind of data that would have no longer Y axis. Selecting this now will give us this chart. So we want to make sure this chart is going to be fit into here, like this. Bring this down. So I can copy the same format I have on this. I'll copy using the Format Painter. I'll have it right here, and that is done for me. So you can see, even if I make it a bit smaller, I'll have what I want. This is where beautiful. So our dashboard is actually on the way to be very beautiful, just like what we have right here. 
it's not just all about the beauty, it's about the functionality we have on the dashboard. Okay, the next thing we're going to do right now is to look at how we can actually create this particular part. I wouldn't like to use chat for this, I just want to actually create this on my own. And uh, we have a condition here because this particular one is showing red while this one is showing green because this the female gender actually has higher revenue generated. So we have this. So this actually happens when we use our filter or slicers. It responds to slicers and the color changes based on the condition we've set for it. So quickly, let's go ahead and do that. So over to the customer table. So where we have our measure created inside the customer measure table. So we're going to create a new measure here right now. In this new measure, we want to segment our male our customers from our female customers in terms of revenue. The very thing you need to understand when doing this is just to like go to your customer table. So if you're in your customer table, check that column that contains male and female. Is the male and female in like this? Male, female like this, or we have M for male and F for female. So if you don't know which one it is and you try to reference anyone you like, you might have an error. So for that, make sure you verify. Okay, what I have is actually M for male and F for female. Let's try it. Over here in our measure, I'm going to actually type male revenue. So for male revenue, what we need is to use the calculate function. So using the calculate function, we're going to give it the expression revenue, total revenue here. So when I hit my comma, it's actually asking for filter. My filter right now is going to be gender. And that gender comes from the customer table. So we're going to see where the customer is actually equals to male, M for male. So we go ahead and close this. Then hit our enter key. This is actually all we need to do. Let us verify this. I can just go ahead and format this right now. Then after the format, we can actually remove the extra decimal places we have on it because we don't want to show it. So we put it on zero. Okay, next now, let us see if this is actually what we want. So put this into a card. And we have the value displayed. This is beautiful. So I'm going to bring it to this side. So the next one now is for me to just duplicate this and just make a single change or two changes we're good to go so create under measure so inside here i'm going to paste in my variable sorry my measure right there so this measure should be female instead of male so female and here we change this one to earth so if i hit my enter this calculates for my you know our female gender for me so do we need to verify this? I guess no. We need to add two more measures before we create the condition that applies to those measures that changes it to red or green. Then we need to create a percentage for our male and percentage to our female. To do that, we just have to go ahead and create this percentage. Let's say PCT or male. Okay, I'm going to use normal percentage here, male. So we're going to divide. So what are we dividing? We're dividing our male revenue by the total revenue. So this gives us the actual percentage for our male. So we can just copy this. So we can copy this. So make sure you format this into a percentage, it's very important. Then let's go ahead and actually create a new measure. So pasting this one into the new measure you have just created. So instead of male, we choose this female. So over here we use the female measure. So this is all we need to do. We hit the enter key and make sure we convert this to a percentage. So back to percentage. Okay, 
right now that we have gotten this done, let us verify if this is actually a percentage or not. So I'm going to remove this one from here then push this one in. And here it's giving me 50.30%. That is correct. So the next thing we need to do now is to actually, I'm going to bring in the second one. So I can quickly have this duplicated, like copy and paste this. So instead of me having just the male or the female, I can have the male in here as well. So I have the male here. So 49.70, 50.30, adding them together will give you 100%. Okay, next thing now is for we to create some kind of a conditional formatting for it. This is not in any way complicated. All you just have to do is to actually say, or oh, see error for conditional formatting. So let's increase it a bit. So I'm going to say mail. So what I'm going to do now is to use the if function. So inside the if function, I'm going to say if my percentage uh, is a pair, this particular percentage here. Okay, let's do this. So the measure, we're going to use the male percentage, is some kind of greater than what? Than the female percentage. So you go down here. So what I want to have is to have green. So let's remove this intelligence here to see what we are doing. So we want to have green as color. Otherwise, we want to have red as color. So you can use the color code to you know, do this. So anyone is cool. So we have done this and we just have to do it once and I just do copy. So I'm going to hit the enter key. So we've gotten this created for our male. So we need to create for the female, which means we have to create a new measure for that. So let's go ahead and paste what we have copied and just make a little change to it. So here we change this one to female. Then we go over here now. What we're going to do is to actually say, uh, let's just change this particular part. So we're going to say if the female percentage here is greater than the male percentage. So what we want is green and otherwise give us red. So if I hit my enter key, we have just set the conditions we want to have. Then it is time for we to format these particular percentages into the right you know, colors. So what we're going to do in that instance is to go over here. Then if you look at it, this is a call out value. So we have to change the color from here. Whatever color we change will be reflected. But actually, this is not what we want. We don't want to use any of those colors here. We want to conditionally format this so you can click on this particular fx here so click on the fx we go for our role i think uh, it's going to be field value for the field value we go to our customer and uh, we locate the c earth conditional formatting for male and female so what we click on is the female so we click on ok here and that gives green to this so is something wrong with this Okay, this is okay. Let's do for female here. For female, we click on this. So we select here. We select go to our customer measure. So we select the C for female. We click on OK. So we are having the same thing. That means something is wrong with our measure. Let's find out what it is. So we made a mistake in bringing in those conditions. Let us click on this particular mail here. So when you click on this FX here, so you can see what we have here is actually the female, not the male. That is why you don't have it to give you the right color. So let's change it from female to male. So we go to the customer measures. So we scroll down and we pick male instead of female. So when we click on OK right now, so we have it. This is what it is that you need. So it responds to whatever filter we placed on it right here. So it's not going to work here because when you click on this one to filter it, it's going to be a single customer. And that customer will definitely figure out to what customer do I really belong to, the male gender or the female gender, to give 100%. So what 
So to avoid filtering using this particular customer table now, what we're going to do is to make sure we click on this and go to view. Then, okay, go to format. On the format, you see this particular edit interaction here. Click on it. So you can disable it. So disable this. So if I actually go here now and uh, use the customer to filter my tables now, it wouldn't affect it at all. You understand? So this is exactly what you can do. You can actually use this to, you know, make your interaction to look very nice. Otherwise, you will definitely have ugly interactions on your report. Once you are done, go over here and turn it off. And this is what you're going to have back. You get it now. All right. Our next measure is the average customer age. So just go ahead and actually do that. Here is it. Average customer age. Use the average function. Then you need to get the customer age that we have created. You remember that? So once you have done that, you can actually push this into a card for you to see what we have. Then this is what it is that we have. So we have 43 years. So we can turn off the category label. We don't need it. All we need is just this one. So make it a bit smaller and have it somewhere around, uh, around here. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this. But before then, let's quickly go over here and change the font type to a bolder font type. So I'm going to use this. Let's scroll down a little bit. This very one here. Oh, that looks nice. So I'm going to put it on 30 instead of 45. So something like this is OK. So now for the color, I want it to be a little bit calm. So let's go with this one. That is good. So I can now go ahead and have it copied and pasted. So on the next one, I'm going to be using my numbers of customers over here. Don't worry, we're going to rearrange all of this in no time. So click over here and go for here and click here. Then this is numbers of customers. That gives you 18,000 customers. So with this, we can definitely copy this very one to be used because we want to be some kind of... Oh, use the first way to do that. So just type in the name here. So here we have it. So we have average customer age and we have total customer. Yeah, that is what it is. So over here, we need to actually make sure we so bring in the total revenue that is peculiar to male and female gender right on this part. Let's do it. So the very first you're going to do, make sure you actually click on both of them and uh, set the size to something reasonable. So I want to go down to here. I'll set this one to 14. That is better. Now for the category, we don't want that. I'm going to turn that off. We're done. We can just make this smaller. Do the same thing to this one as well. So we're going to take this one and bring it right here for the time being. The next thing we're going to do right now is to actually get this as well and uh, make sure we type in male and female. All right. Oh, uh, we have actually gotten all the figures and charts ready. And the next thing we're going to do right now is to create, you know, a matching background for this in PowerPoint. How do we do that? Okay. The very first thing I do is just to go over here on my, you know, desktop. I some kind of got in my snipping tool just for me to actually take a screenshot of this. Then click on your snipping tool, click on new. Then you actually select this area. So you can see that is the canvas area. Don't go beyond it. It's some kind of very easy. So once you have done that, you've taken a screenshot of your report. Then the next thing you have to do is to save this somewhere. So I'm going to save it with what I'm going to remember. So let's just scroll down a bit. So I'm going to save it with 001. Here we go. So once I'm done with this, the next thing now is for me to head up to PowerPoint. So on PowerPoint, we have the light version and the dark version. So we're going to go with the light version now. The next one is going to be how to get the dark version, which is very simple. It's just change the colors and make some little changes. That is all. Okay. Click over here now and remove this. 
So once you have this removed, the next thing you're going to do is to actually go ahead and bring in that particular um, screenshot, right? Go to pictures, this device. So go to your desktop or anywhere you have it saved in and uh, bring in the screenshot. So here we have this. So we have the screenshot here. The very first thing I'm going to do is to go all the way back here. Now I'm going to copy the color code of this one. How do you do that? Right click. Then you go to what? Go to format ship. Then from there, you click on this particular fill. You click on this color. You click on more colors and you copy the hex code. Here we have it. Copy the hex code. Once you have done that, just step off and go back right here. So click on the background, not on the um, screenshot you brought in on the background and click over here so you have to paste in the color over here so go ahead to custom then on this ff you just have to take it off and replace it with this one then click on ok you have this so once you have once you have this right now the next you're going to do is to go all the way back to insert and uh, click on shapes from shape you click on this particular rounded corners rectangle so i'm gonna fill it in here so for the corners i'm just gonna some kind of reduce it a little bit i don't want something too much so i think i'm cool with this one so i just have to oh, bring it up a little bit okay now how do i know the middle so what i can do right now is just to go over to this particular shape format here from there, you go to align and your align center. Then you come back again, you align middle. So it has been centralized for you, right? Then the next thing is for you to actually say for the uh, fill, uh, you want to keep the fill. Then for the outline, which is the line here, we don't want any line for it. Then you go over to your fill and convert it to white. So the next thing again is for you to send it to back send to back then it gives you this one here so i'm going to actually make sure my um templates i just brought in which is the screenshot i brought in sh should actually fit into this white part of it so do you see that now so this one fits into here and that is beautiful so we just make sure so this is what I want. Okay, it is time for me to start giving our shape in here. So we need to get some shapes. And the shape we're gonna get right now is still the same shape we've used previously. That is gonna be this particular rounded one. Then you drag it in here. So you will have to resize and uh, make sure the, rect the rounded part here is not that much. So once you have done that, you need to make sure you just align it properly. I, I want to keep a space, a white space here and a white space at the top as well. That white space at the top is what is going to take uh, my, how would I call it? That's what's going to take my, my report title. So when I talk about the white space, I'm talking about this particular part should be blank. I don't want anything on it. And uh, on this particular part, we should have it blank. We don't want to extend whatever I want to type in here. So we want to keep on that white space over here as well. It's very important. We want to keep it at this side. And at the bottom, we want to maintain on that white space as well. So for your dashboard, always keep a white space. And between your charts, you need to keep white space between it like this to actually create a separator. That is what you do when you want to create something very beautiful. You can see what I'm doing right here. I'm just giving you an illustration of what you need to do. Then on the practical level, let's do it. So now I'm actually very much satiated with what I've done here. So the next thing I'm gonna do right now is to go over here and remove the outline. Then going over to our color, this is the color we want to use for our you know, card. Then I'll go over here and uh, copy the color code. Go to custom. So you already have it downloaded. Go ahead and copy that. Then let's go back here. Now click on this one and let's go more. So we paste in the color we've just copied. 
and I click on OK, we have this. Can you see that now? So if you want to see what is behind it, what you can do now is just for you to some kind of reduce this transparency a little bit. So it can show you what is behind it, right? So the next thing now, let's bring it back. We can just have this one duplicated. Once you have it duplicated, you move it right here and you make sure you create a white space just like this. So you can use your arrow to actually manage how the white space has been created. So you can drag it a little bit down like this. Don't forget the white space you have been it here. So once you are good with that, you can have another duplicate of it. So you bring this one over here. So you can see, this is beautiful. Then always maintain the white space and that is it. So once you're cool, we get another one duplicated again. We bring this one over here. Very simple and easy. So we stretch it. So once we are cool, we duplicate it. Bring this one back in. Keep it over here. Now we reduce it and create for our chart. Then we get it duplicated. Bring it for this one here. So we need to actually give a white space for this part. All right, do you see what I have right now? So what I'm gonna maintain now is the white space here is not really enough. So this is what it is that you have. So once you are very much satisfied with what you have now, you can click on this one and click on delete and have deleted. This is what you are going to be left with. You get it. Okay, we have more things to do. The very first thing we're going to do again after all is click on this insert and click on your um, shapes. Click on the circle here and hold the shift key down to drag the circle right in here. Once you have done that, you bring in the circle to this particular part. So just settle it down somewhere around, uh, around here. So once you have done that, you have to change the color of the circle to white. So change the color to white. Then for the outline, you can decide to keep the outline and just give it the color like this. So if this is what you want, then you have to duplicate it and bring one down. So on those two circles here, we're going to put in icons, right? I'm going to show you a website where you can get icons from. Then we need to get under circle. This time around, I'm going to get the same rounded rectangle. So here we go. Click out, go to insert, click here. So we can just get in the rounded rectangle here. Not too much. So I'm going to show, just keep it over here. Then we do the same thing to it. We put white for the color, for the outline. I select this, the should be the outline. And I go ahead and duplicate it. So bring this one down. I have it right here. So once I've done that, I'm going to actually have to duplicate this one here. So this time around, I'm going to check to use this color, but I'm going to use a color more brighter than this one. So you can actually, you know, increase the brightness of the color over here. Click on OK. Then I will just make it a bit Yes, this one will be somewhere around uh, here. So have it duplicated and bring this one here. So just to take your time to some kind of adjust it until you are very much satiated with what you have. So right now I think I'm cool with what I have. So the next thing is actually getting the icons that we are going to use right here. Let's go over to our browser and search for a particular website that can give us some couple of, you know, icons for free. Okay, if you're on Google, the very first thing you're going to do is to actually search for flat icon. So it's flaticon.com. So wait for it to open up. So here we have it. So we have the animated icon here. We have normal um, icon here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to search for people. So hit enter to search for people. 
and it's going to give you lots of icon about people that you can choose from can you see it now you can choose from any of those icons here i think this is one of the icons i've used so if i click on this icon now it's going to help me download this particular icon to my uh, system so here we go we have it it's 100% free you don't need to pay a dime for it so go ahead and click on the png right here so once you have done that you click on free download and that will definitely have it downloaded for you asap so it's actually initiating it so once downloaded you're going to find it inside your download you know just go ahead and copy it so right now as you can see it's actually downloading so i already have this i'm going to actually use the previous one i have used for this same work and uh, bring it right in here another way to get icons is use the inbuilt icon here so when you click on your insert you see this particular icons so when you click on it it's going to actually open some couple of icons for you you can search through and actually pick the one you need or that can actually match what you want to do so it's just that you have limitation with the kind of or the types of icons you get from here so for that i always love to use external site to actually get my icons so i'm going to cancel so I'm just going to paste in these icons I have already. So we have these icons. Just go ahead and download it and place it just this way. So now you can see it's making our chat look more beautiful. All right. I think I'm going to tell you first thing that we are done with the uh, white background. And the next thing we can do now is to actually have this one here duplicated. That is all we have to do. Once you have this one, you know, copied, so we can definitely change it and uh, just go ahead and click on duplicate slide. So we have just duplicated this particular slide. The next thing we have to do right now is to have its color changed. So let's go back to this color part here. On the color part, we have this color for our background. So I'm just going to copy its what it's called. So copy it right away from here. Just Ctrl A, Ctrl C to copy. Then you click on cancel. Let's get back here. So instead of us to use this color uh, for background, click on the background color. And uh, let us fill the background color with the new color we have just brought in. Then we're going to do this. I'll click on OK. So we have the color. I'm going to have the same color for this particular part. So I go over here. I select this color. This is beautiful. So now it's of no difference. What am I going to do? I'm going to click on this one here. Click on this particular part where it says effects. So once you do that, go to where it says shadow and you choose from the preset you have over here. So there, there are some kind of lots of preset you can choose from. So I'm going to choose this particular preset. Then for the transparency, you can increase and uh, you can decrease. I've just increased and this is what you have. Do you see this? I think I love the way it is right now. Okay, let's get back here now. And this is what I'm going to do. I can decide to copy this and bring it back here. And I'll paste it down here. So once I have it pasted down, so I'll go over here. I'll tap this one multiple times. I will start giving it to this, 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 and this. Automatically, I have just changed, you know, the colors. Then go with your escape key to get that particular format painter off and uh, get this one deleted. So can you see, we are about to create our dark, you know, background. So for the dark background, we are going to actually remove this particular one a little bit away. And for this one, you click on it and give it the same color. Click on here. Let's come over here. Give it this particular same dark color. So for the outline, we're going to say no outline to this one. Then we do the same thing to this one. Click here. And let's click on this we have it so will this particular you know icons pop out no not at all click over to this particular part and uh, let's go to this particular pictures color so once we do that click over here you see the white one this is it here click on it then with this now we can just manage our icons so click on this and move it and make sure it settles here then we do the same thing to both of these ones here move them out and quickly come to this come here and choose this white one and let's some kind of change this one to the right color that's going to be this one then now we can move those ones back in 
hmm, this look beautiful. Okay, one thing we have missed is that this one here still have outline and even this one, but the outlines they have make them beautiful. If you wanna leave the outlines, that is actually gonna be your own choice. But for me, I'm gonna take off the outlines. So click on them and just move them off. So it doesn't cost you much time to do. So just move them away, select and remove them. So click back on them now and push them back into it. And let us look at what we have done. This is beautiful. Okay, what about this color? Does it really lose some kind of look beautiful on this? Hmm, if you love it this way, you can decide to keep it. But for me, I think it's not really an ideal to keep this color the way it is. I'm gonna change this color to one of my color here, which is this one. So just go ahead and copy and let's get back here. If I have it pasted now, double click twice on this to pick this color. And here we go. So we can now get this one deleted. Okay, we are missing one thing and that is gonna be, we adding a text over here to show light and uh, dark, you know, um, templates or background, whatever you wanna call it. So click on insert and go to this particular text box here and drag the text box in here and type in light team. Okay, for the light team, we need to some kind of um, make sure we change the color to white, not very white like this. Okay, if you like that, you can push it and bring it in here. So just adjust it a little bit and make sure it's inside. So we have to copy this and take it to this one. So I paste it here and I change the color of the text to stand for my dark team. So this is the dark team. So I'm gonna name this one dark. So it's gonna be dark. Okay, I think this is all. We can switch between two, two of them. Can you see? Light and dark team. This is what we have done to actually, you know, have this created. Beautiful. Okay, what is next? We have a little logo that we have here for dashboard. So we need to bring that in as well. So I have it here. I'm gonna have the same thing over here for this one. I need to change the color a little bit. So I come over here. I can just go to picture, come over here and choose something a bit dark. Okay, this one pops out. So let's check it out. This is how you create your background in PowerPoint and it's beautiful. So if you start doing this, like watching my videos, it will become something automatic that you don't have to even think too much on like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna do this? So we have done this. The next thing we have to do right now is to some kind of, uh, should I call it export? Yes, of course, we have to get this out. And that's gonna be under export. So once you click on export this, what are you gonna export this as PDF? I guess, no, don't do that. So click on change, you know, file type and select either between this particular one or you choose this one, or you can decide to say save as other file, then you can actually use GIF to actually have it done. But for now, I'm gonna choose between either of these. So I'm gonna go with uh, PNG, all right? So just click on PNG. So let us have this saved somewhere where we can pick it from. I'm gonna say B1 for background one. So once we have done that, we choose a destination where we can easily pick it from. Let's go down to YouTube post. Okay, we can scroll down. We can just have it anywhere around here so we can save. That saves that. I'm just gonna say just this one. Then I click on this one, I do the same thing to it. So I click on expert, click here, click on the same PNG. And this time around, this is gonna be uh, B2. So just remember which one is B1, which one is B2. Then you save just this one. So we are done from here. It is time for we to step back to our Power BI. Okay, we are back here. Let us have to deal with the first one to be the light one first. Then what you need to do, don't select any of the charts or even text boxes. So make sure you select the canvas, you know, background. So choose it here. 
So when you, once you choose the browse image, the next thing you have to do is to locate where you have that particular, you know, um, background saved in. So I'm going to go to my YouTube post here. So put it up and here we go. So now we can, f oh, definitely, here we go. So if you have it on 100%, it's going to be transparent. So you have to bring it down to 0% and this is what you do. So because some part of our chart contains some kind of, um, what I call it, white background. So we have to remove it. So what do we do? We just click on this. We click on this. We go over to size and style. We take off the background. So we do the same thing to this one. Once you click on this, we take it off. So we can move it away a little for now. So click on this one here and take it off. Then we can just reduce it to fit into its own house. So we're gonna do something like this. So we make sure we make it fit in rightly. Then we do this, okay? So here we go. So remember, we have this one here. We don't want to have the, um, what I call it? This, this slides our header, we turn it off. So we can now make it something small like this and I'll bring it over to here. So the next thing I'm gonna do right now is just to go to the settings. Okay, let's go to the value here. On that value, if we scroll down, we have the background. So we can click on the background and choose this as the background for the value. So you might wanna choose a brighter one that will pop out very well. Go over to more colors then you can uh, move it to the top so it's more brighter. So that is beautiful. So once you have done that, the next thing we're going to do right now is to make sure we select a font that will definitely pop out. And that's going to be a white one. So it pops out, but one thing is still left. We have to make the font to be a bold font. So let's go for this area black. What about this? Mm, not so good. So I'm going to select a different one. I'm going, going with this. Oh, this looks fine, but it can just increase how much visibility we have. Okay. So with this now, we are good to go. Once you have it open, this is what you have. You want to see top two. You have your top two customers. You have the top three customers. And this is some kind of beautiful. So we have to write just a little DAX to just make sure we spice the things up. But before then, what we're going to do right now is to some kind of... Um, you know, do one touch. And that touch is going to be, we need to some kind of um, make sure there is color. Correlation. Yeah, correlation. Okay, I've clicked on this. What I'm going to do now is to actually match it with this color. If I can't remember the color code of this one, you know what to do? You click on columns. Then you click on the FX here. Don't click on this particular delete. Otherwise, it's going to actually have it removed for you. All right. Just wait for it. Okay, we have it up. Click over here and go to more colors and you copy the color hex code. So once you have done that, you cancel or you click on OK, it's all the same. So you can come over here and click on this one. Then you go over to the FX right here. Remember, if you go over here and choose this one, it's going to give you the color just like this, but I hate this. So click over here to still highlight the highest one and the lowest one. So what are you going to do? Change from rule to gradient. And once you have done that, you are going to tell it that, okay, now you know what to do? Hmm, you can do this based on the measure I'm using over here. So let's go ahead and select the measure. Go to customer measure. And uh, we have to scroll down to get the top customer measure we've created. If you can't remember the measure you have used in, what you can do is to cancel. And once you click over here, you can scroll down and be under the customer measure and you can see we have dynamic customer here, right? So let's go over here. So let's click gradient. Let's go over here. Or you can search dynamic. So you can see we have dynamic customer as a measure. So click on there. So come over here for the highest value. We want to have this color. So for the lowest value now, we want to choose to have something uh, like this. Then you add a middle color and choose the same one like this. Then let's kind of click on OK. So can you see what you have right now? This is what it is. 
you see that but if you can see this color here that we have over here is not the same thing as this color what can we do to make sure it matches the color over here so there is one thing you can do and that is for you to actually go over to the color that is producing this and copy the color code to paste it over here to have the same color so once you click over here again on the fx you go over to here and uh, just copy this color code once and for all so let's go over to this particular part now then let's click over here let's apply the color to this one so we paste in so we click we paste in then with that as i click on ok so it should be right as uh, well, yeah that is good okay we have it nicely laid down so one thing i hate about this right now is that we have this particular you know um what do i call it i think that is a legend so we need to get off the legend that is gonna be this one turn the legend off and the legend is gone so once we have turned off the legend the next thing to do right now is that this particular part here is not showing exactly what we want that is actually the y axis so what do we do so make sure you have the chart clicked on and let's go over to the y axis so click on it and click on bold so now it shows what we want so nobody can tell what this chart is all about right now so we have to make it a little bit much more interesting to read what do we do and how can we make this chart to be some kind of much more descriptive to tell the end users what the chart is for specifically when we select top four from here we want it to actually tell a story okay to do that now the very first thing i'm going to do is just to click on this particular part right here once i've done that i can just go ahead and copy and paste it down then move the pasted one over here and uh, i can just remove this particular part i'm going to make it buyer so buyers and i'll go to the back i will just remove this particular part i will turn this one to esteem so the reason why i leave the r was to me to keep the formatting just like this so now i've gotten this but this does not still help me very much what can i do to make it more better so we have to create a dynamic you know our title for it or should we call that one subtitle now mm -hmm. this time around i think we should call that one dynamic subtitle so how do we create that to create the dynamic subtitle we need to create a measure so let's come back over here you can just click here and create a new measure So it's going to be very simple not something complicated then on this one now we need to write a bit called so i'm going to call it um title top customers okay so the first thing is to write a variable and inside this variable, I'm going to save the selected, you know, um, top. Like now we have top four. So selected of um, customer. So we have four customers selected now. So inside the selected customers, I'm going to use selected value as a function. Selected value. So the selected value is going to select which customer has been selected for me. I'm going to actually use what we have used that is actually, you know, giving us this. If you can't remember this, you need to actually go over to the table that is actually producing it to give it to you. So you need to go over here to the where anywhere you can find the table in here, right? So now what we can do now is to search for it. I think that is going to be value here, selected so we call it selected top customer can you see that now selected top customer so you go ahead and close it so we just return directly so under the return what we're going to do is just to say inside here d so we close it so we need to concatenate 
our measure sorry our variable with this so the next thing again we use the concatenator we join highest ranking customers this is all we need to do we're done from here so the next thing now is just to actually bring this into a card and uh, bring it in here that is all we have to do all right let's find out if this really works and i believe it's going to work 100 percent so now we have a title here bring in the title as a card so it says the highest ranking customers so the highest ranking customers is not right so we need to have a number here so let us click on this and see what is the name so we just have to go down see here we go we have this this is what we have used over here we also have used this one that is dynamic customer value yes dynamic customer value is what we ought to have used for our selected value so let's go back and click on this one click here so now dynamic so it's gonna be dynamic customer value it should have value does it have it no 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 the one with value the one with value is what we are looking for dynamic customer so let's just use the one with dynamic customer thank you to work so hit your enter key and now we have gotten it done so let's go ahead and move this down a little bit to see what it is so now it says top four highest ranking customers so if i select like the top five now it should give me top five ranking customers i'm going to select top two it should give me top two ranking customers you know and all of them so this is what we want so how do we make sure we fit this into here is something we have to do so first of all we turn off the category label we don't want it then we come over here we make sure we are using 12. that is beautiful now with 12 now we're good to go so we have to resize it then we push it into here right so we just make it like this so we have to go to style and uh, size and style we turn off this all right this is looking good already so let's take it out so can you see it now esteem buyers top four are the four highest ranking customers so when we select five of it so we have the five highest ranking customers right here so now this is much more cool than the previous one we have actually used without we have done just write an estimate uh, esteemed customers so we have this so what is left so we just have to rearrange this so now we need to make sure this is sitting in the middle of what we have as a background so hold your control key to select at them at the same time so once you select this one you hold the control key you select this one so you select this one you hold the control key select this one you move it and make sure you are in the middle of it then you release it so once you are satiated you have to do the same thing to this one as well so make sure this is in the middle so you have that particular red horizontal and vertical line that is telling you that you are on the right path leave it okay we do the same to this one that is beautiful so we just move this once you see that red horizontal or vertical you release it which shows that you are actually uh cool with it so now we do the same thing to this one so i'm gonna select this and just make sure it's like this so i come over here i bring this down i come here i select and i arrange something like this okay now we are going to make sure we take off the uh, background from this ones that is nice so we must make sure we put it in the middle of it beautiful so now for this one is the female so which means we made a mistake over this particular one so how can we rectify it don't worry 
we can. So here is the mail. Let's quickly go over to our PowerPoint. So we make sure we swap male to this or female. Once you are done, go over here, export. Make sure you use um, PNG. You can see the previous one here. Just double click, click on yes, and just say this one. So click on the second one and do the same thing to this and export, click. So we go over to where? Scroll down, this is it. We just click on just this one. So it's time for we to go back to our Power BI, right? So click out and uh, click this, remove it and bring in a new one. That's gonna be this one. So with this now, we have the female gender here. So what we need to put in here again now is actually gonna be our, uh, what do you call it? Our revenue that we generated from this. Okay, so it's going to be ending based on gender. So I'm going to bring this particular one, copy this one, copy and paste it, bring it over here. So stretch it. So we just highlight. So it's going to be ending. On gender so for the ending part here i would love to use something like this color so over here oh sorry not this color select we use this this color then we come here, we select. We can use a calm color like this one. So here we have it. So what we're gonna bring in now is actually gonna be a measure. So let's just copy the previous measure we have here, bring it in over here. And uh, we bring in our total revenue. So the total revenue is not found under our customer measure, it's under all measures. So we need to bring in total revenue. So we can come here and have this removed, then check this one, that brings in our total revenue. Okay, the next thing we're going to do right now is that we need to format this and make it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and put it on 15. So go over here, let's use half of it, 15. So we have this, right? So you can just go ahead and copy, Oh, now we made a mistake. We can't use this because that will give us the total revenue for all of it, right? So I'm still going to duplicate it and bring one of it down. So just copy and paste. Then we should have total revenue for male and female. And that lives in what? That lives in our customer measure. So we have male revenue and we have the female revenue. So if I scroll, we have male revenue here. So we are on mail right now so we can go ahead and uncheck it remove this and this is the male revenue so if i come to the female so we go to where we have the female revenue so here we have it so we need to actually get this one off so we bring in the female revenue so you can see higher than the male revenue that was why we have it on something like 50 percent and this one is 40 percent you get it right now so this is what we have done to actually got it created. So if you don't want to use this, you can decide to go over here on the display unit. You use the none. So we use none. So when you use none, you can quickly click on this and format it. So you click over here, format this, and take off the extra decimal places you would have on it. So put zero over here.
So you get it. You put zero over here. So now we have lots of numbers, right? That's some kind of... This is what we have. So this is the one of the disadvantages you're going to have when you actually do something like this. So for that, what you need to do is to return it back to the previous one. So use auto. So when you use auto right now, you can now make sure you go back here and uh, choose the two decimal places. So it's going to give you 153.5 or 0.4 or whatever. Let's see. So now this is what it is that you have. So you can decide to just have one decimal place for it. So to show it. So now it's going to be 0.6. So here we go. We have something like this. So do the same thing to this particular one as well. So this is what you can do. So and now we are good to go. So next is for we to actually have a title over here. So how do we actually bring in this particular title of a thing? To bring in the title now, what we can do is to some kind of go over on this one and we duplicate this as well. We move the duplicate, we push it over here. Increase it. So what I'm going to do is to say customer. So to get the formatting, just leave the R. Now you can move the R away. So customer performance dashboard. Right. So once we have done this, we can just control A. Let's put this on 16 and see what it is. So we have it on 16. So for this particular part here, I'm going to change it to a different color. Let's go with this. So here we go. Customer performance dashboard. So if you want to have any filter on this right now, hmm, the next thing is to actually have a filter. So what filter could we have? Let's have filter for country. So we can bring in a slicer. So inside the slicer, we can go to our country. And that is going to be very beautiful because we might need to know how much are we doing based on a particular demographic? So click over here and select your country. So you have a country in here. So we don't want to use this. We don't want to use this. So let's go over and change how this is. So we choose the drop down. So with the drop down, we are called. So we come over to the value area. So let us take the header off. Okay, we can keep the header if we want to keep the header. It's our choice, but I'm going to take the header off for now. So once I get the header off, I can go for the background. No background. So let's go over to size and style. Let's take up this background here. Then let's go back here under the value. So you can select the border font. So once I select this now, this is what I have. So you can stretch this and I move this over here. Right. So once I move this over here, you can use your arrow down to actually shift it. So what you can do now is just for you to some kind of um, get this one, move it up, and uh, you can just type in here, select. So remove this. Select country. So now we move it here. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller. It's too thick. Uh, we'll definitely use 11. Then I will select something like this. So we can bring it down a little bit. Okay. Nicely done. Once we click, we can choose France. So we can choose Canada, any country. So remember, this one has not been touched. So we have to some kind of, first of all, get off the you know, title we have, oh, sorry, the background we have on it. The background is gone. Then we need to actually create um this and make sure 
we have a nice design for it. So sorry for that. Let's scroll down. So we need to choose the color. I copy the color code from here, if you can't remember it. Then come over here and uh, first of all, click on this FX here. So what do we have here is something you have to remember. We have to tar revenue over there. So we use a gradient. So we have here, we just type in T for total revenue and uh, we select for this one. We wanna select something like this. Then we go over here, we choose this color for the highest value. And uh, we choose a middle color because we don't want to have that color to some kind of... So we choose the same color we have chose, we chose over here. I think it's the same color, I presume. So, okay, I'm choosing the third one. So once we have done that, let's click on OK. So we just want to highlight the top one. So we don't want to have this one, some kind of, you know, that isn't what it is. So we take off what? We take off the... Um, legend so once we've done that we go for the y axis that we kept and uh, we put it on bold that can shows us everything here so you just have to rearrange it so once you have done that the next thing now is just to click on this one here just copy this one copy and paste it then you move it over here on this one we can type in Customer profiling. Customer profiling. So customer. Profiling. So drag it. So for the customer profiling, I would love to just have this. And this color. So let's go over on this particular customer of a thing and change the customer color. So we want it to be some kind of standout. So what about this? Okay, so let's just pop this one up a little bit. Select this one. Let's go with this. So take your time to actually have this formatted. It's going to help you a lot. Yeah, sure. Okay, nicely done, guys. This is what it is that you can do to actually have this done. So we have gotten this done. The next we are going to do now to have a dark part of it, you know, create that is very, very simple. What do we do? We just go over here and have this one duplicated. So once you have it duplicated, what you can do now is to remove this particular bar, uh, bl black one and the sorry the white one and bring in the dark one so with the dark one something is not really working well right this is crazy what do we do okay now what we can do now is to change the color so we quickly go back to our what go back to our template that we have built here so we are going to get this color because this is the color we want to use to dominate our newly created background so make sure you control a copy and let's go back so once we are here click on this you don't need to do much once you click on this we go over to our column so we click on the FX here. The only thing we have to change is this particular one. So we change this to this color. So once that matches the color, it's coming up. So we do the same thing to this one. Click on this one here. So we match this to this color. Once you have done this, just step out. Click on this one. We match this. So we are bringing out the glory. So, once we have done that, we match out. Okay. So, for this particular part here, I want to select the same color. So, we go over here. We paste in the color. So, that is cool. For this particular text we have in it, the text here should be the same color. We select the color. That is beautiful. 
Now for the text here, we need to make sure we bring in the color that will pop out. That is beautiful. Let's do this. Nicely done. Okay, now we have to match this particular part of our color here to the color we have used for a chart. Select it and select here, and uh, this is it here. Then for this one, we select a white color that will pop out on black. Let's go with this over here. So for this one, we just select this color. I want to leave that color for the chart the way it is. So we select just the text and have it changed. That is all we need. So let's go here, change it to this white we have used. So with this now, it's popping out. So let's change this particular part as well. So we use white. So we can now match this one with the recent color we have brought in. Then we go with this one here. Then for this particular one is the light one. I'll leave it that way. So for this part here, hmm, it doesn't pop out on black. So we can just select it and choose a color that will pop out. Let's go with this one. So for the slicer, we need to get a color that will pop out. So we select the same thing. Oh no. Okay, I think the first one didn't work, which is on this one. We need to select. Select here. Select here. Then on this particular part here, I told you we need to match this color. So we have to be very careful when we select. Let's go with white. Beautiful. Select here. Let's go with the same white. That is beautiful. So over here, we need to do under work again. Select this part. Then let's go with this particular color. Then we come over here. We select this. Let's go with this color. So we do the same thing to this one. Then we choose this color. Let's select it. Come over here. Let's select the white color. So for the text, you can multi-select, hold your control key down and come over here and uh, select white color to make it pop. So what is happening to this one here? Why is it not changing? That I've done that before. Okay, that is nice. Right, the next thing is for we to click on this chart itself. Once we click on it, we go over to our X, our Y axis rather. So we click on it and uh, we choose something that will pop out. So on this part here, we're gonna change it to match our new background. So we select what? We select this color. So we choose this part here. We select a white color. That will pop. So we do the same to this particular part as well to highlight the key important information. We select this part. We choose, we choose white for it. So we select this main content over here and uh, we go over here, we select this color for it. You see that? So let us select the chart itself. And now the chart itself needs to some kind of have this data label updated. So for data label, once we click on it, we go to the value area. So we get into the color. We are gonna choose this color, it looks bright. You get it now. So now if we go down, down, you see the reference line here, yeah, scroll down. You see the value for the reference line, the label. We scroll, we change the color to match. That is it. So we need to actually control our IX axis, right? So this is the X axis right here. We change the X axis to actually match as well. That is beautiful. So we're doing the same thing to this particular Y axis here. So click on the Y axis and uh, give it this. 
All right, you might want to have your data label on it. So it's free. Just go ahead and click on it and change the data label. So over here, we choose the color that would definitely match. Let's go with this. And over here, let's go with this. Okay, do that to every part of it and you're good to go. So select this part and select over here the color you want to use. So once you've done that, you're just good to go. All right, let us take a look at what we have done and see where we're missing something. And that's going to be on this particular part right here. So multi-select them and just go over here and change the color, right? So once you have done that, the next thing you're going to change its color now is the, uh, the text you have for the male and the female right here. So just highlight the content inside it and just give it your color. So do the same thing to this one as well. Then you just change this one. All right. So once you're cool with this, then we have to just address this particular part. There are some parts we need to address. Make sure those colors disappear at all, totally. So we just have to go over here and we choose to use this color this time around. That is beautiful. So we still have this color being ruled to be here. So we choose this one. We come over here. We choose this one. Okay. Let's take a look at it. This is how we just got our dark uh, background created. And this is beautiful, right? So you can just maintain how this is looking. Move it up a little bit to fit in. Just adjust things around and you have it. Okay. We have just learned about designing of what it is that we have. We've replicated everything we have done in the previous dashboard that you have seen. And this is great. So if you are just right here with me and uh, you're still watching, that's going to be great for you. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate your staying up till now. You might want to love to hit the subscribe button. And if you are already a subscriber, what is left? Mm. Leave me a comment to let me know what you feel about this. It's very, very important. Please do that and let me know how you feel. Thanks for watching.